strategies for success is Blueberry Productions' fourth film produced exclusively for readers of Director magazine. Designed to help UK businesses achieve competitive advantage through the implementation of best practice, this film includes expert advice from business personalities and industry bodies, as well as a range of case studies from leading organisations around the country. The film focuses on best practice under broad section headings. This allows you to go straight to the specific topic or case study which may be of particular interest to you. The people who work in your organisation are obviously key to its success and we therefore dedicate a large part of strategies for success to people issues such as leadership skills, training, talent management and employee wellness. To introduce this section of the film, we feature the somewhat unconventional approach of Peter Cook, author of Sex, Leadership and Rock and Roll. This includes an interview with Tim Smith, Chief Executive of the Eden Project, to illustrate Peter's rock and roll model of business leadership. In this programme, we're talking about sex, drugs, rock and roll, oh, and leading a business, be it private or public. Does this make you curious? I'm Peter Cook. Managing Director of Human Dynamics and author of Sex, Leadership and Rock and Roll. To lead a high performance business, you've got to engage people's minds, bodies and soul. So what can we learn by mixing world class thinking with the wisdom of rock music where our mentors are Madonna, Motorhead, Meatloaf, Mozart and so on. Let's see. We live in a rock and roll age. Just think of some leaders with attitude. Anita Roddick, Richard Branson, Bob Geldof. 21st century leaders need to be brilliant at relationships, excellent at motivating themselves and others, and they must create the conditions for exceptional performance. I've reduced these to three catchy headlines. Sex, in other words, making and keeping relationships. By the way, we're talking love, trust and networking here. Drugs, drugging yourself is motivation, in other words, peak personal performance. Drugging other people is leadership in other words, inspiring them to reach a vision. Again, we're talking about endorphins and adrenaline here. Rock and roll, that's doing the hard work. Practicing, performing and perspiring. No need, however, to throw a television out the window in order to get high. Wow. Let's look at why music offers an unusually good insight into leadership, HR, the universe and everything else. To lead a business, all leaders need to pay attention to three things the amount of structure there is in the workplace, how much room there is for creativity and improvisation, and the customer expectation. It's exactly the same in music. There's a score, either written down in classical or made up in rock music, kind of like one, two, three, four. There's creativity and improvisation, perhaps more in jazz than there is in rock music. And there is an audience that come back for more than one hit. Let's now look at three different forms of music to expand the connections. Classical orchestras rely on central command to hold things together. The orchestra is more important than the individual and the conductor is extremely knowledgeable about what's being done. The orchestral model is good in a stable business world, but where on earth is that these days? Some government bureaucracies have tried to operate as orchestras, but even they now must respond to the I want it all and I want it now culture. At the other extreme, we have the jazz model, with precocious talents operating at the edge of chaos. Jazz is mostly the prerogative of experts. At the extreme, we have a bunch of jazzers having a real great time, but often leaving their audiences behind. We saw some classic examples of the jazz model of business in the first dot-com revolution, with startup businesses developing products and services for which there was no need or demand for. In the middle, we have the rock and roll model, room for teamwork and individual expression, where leadership changes according to the task being undertaken. A rock and roll leader is both a structure and creativity freak, creativity to get people to bring their brains to work and structure to ensure the show goes on. Both open to feedback and not blown around by whim, fad and fashion. We're talking real emotional literacy here that's living inside your own heads as well as responding to what's going on around you. I think all people who are called leaders and who are asked to describe their leadership style, if they were able to, they've thought too much about it. So tell us, are you an orchestra conductor, a jazzer or a rocker? Uh, I'm not sure I'm actually any of those things exactly. I'm uh, a bit of all of them. 
but I think I'm more like a football captain that tries to lead by example on occasion and then create chaos on other occasions. Because I'm often asked what the role of a chief executive is and I think in some organisations it's a controlling force but I like to think that I've got people working around me who don't need that control. There's a lot of guff and stuff written in the HR community about emotional intelligence. How do you see that? I think I would interpret emotional literacy uh, in terms of a leadership role in uh, understanding where your colleagues are coming from. Who are they? What makes them? What turns them on? What are the things that motivate them? And also being able to take the time to, to read people in terms of knowing whether they're happy, whether they're overstretched. Emotional literacy is also, in my view, about understanding that most people are not, once they've got a slate over their roof, actually inspired by money. Before the Eden Project, I understand that you had a career in the music business. How has that career helped you run this business? Music has taught me an enormous amount about uh, the management of any business. Um, and some of it's rather surprising because in Britain, of course, as you know, you tend to become a this or a that. You're a bricklayer or a lawyer or whatever and you stay there. Uh, and the transferability of one set of skills into another area is not actually encouraged, really. No one had ever taken a garden and marketed it. So when, when we started restoring Heligan, I thought, how could I make this like a, an album sleeve? How could I make it that something people wanted to possess in their memory? So I came up with the name The Lost Gardens Of. Uh, and then realised that a narrative was necessary to go with that. So I talked about it being a stage on which people had led their lives for hundreds of years, unchanging. And then from that moment on, I, I could see that people were coming to Heligan, but seeing it through my story, and they loved it. Finally, here's my top three lessons. At number three, it's got to be rock and roll. Who better than Elvis with All Shook Up? My radical translation of this song suggests that leaders should ride the waves of chaos so that they can deal with the unknown, unstable and unexpected. Number two, it's the song that Frank Sinatra never sung. They did it their way. Clearly a song about drugs in my humble opinion. Perhaps that needs a little explanation. Rather than blind addiction to just following a style, true leadership is about legitimising what they do and getting others to accept who you are. Number one, it's the ABBA song, Knowing Me, Knowing You. Clearly a song about sex, although I think in this case it must relate to business relationships. If you want to encourage a business that rocks, you have to encourage people to bring themselves to work and to make relationships work, be they one-on-one -on -one or one-to-many.